Sour Stewards is uniquely positioned because rates are starting to come down, but because of the amount of inventory that we have here, it allows for buyers to take advantage of this and negotiate with the sellers for the sellers to still give some concessions and lower their payments even more, making the houses even more affordable. We did a webinar in front of a group of top producing agents where we taught them how they can take advantage of this unique opportunity and close 20 more deals this year. Here's the webinar. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the webinar today, guys. We are going to show you how we could close 20 more deals by the end of the year. Um, I'd like to start off by giving Edgardo some props for making this uh, this cover slide here. I think that's super badass. Um, but <clears throat> look, let's start off by talking about what happened yesterday, okay? Um, what happened yesterday? Well, yesterday, the rate, the Fed cut the, the Fed funds rate by half a percentage point. Now, Couple things of this. I want to talk about what actually happened, what really matters, and why this is so important to you, and and why we time this uh, this presentation the way we did because we completely anticipated the Federal Reserve to do what they did yesterday, and it has a big impact. So, um, the Federal Reserve cut rates by half a percent. The public thinks that that means they cut mortgage rates by half a percent. That's not how it works. The Fed does not directly control interest interest rates on mortgages. They do directly control interest rates on home equity lines of credit and cars and credit cards and things like that. But I'm going to steal your thunder here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one of the ways that I like to show this is, can you bring the mic more towards this way? Yeah. One of the ways that I like to show people that we control the mortgage rates is because for a long time, about, you know, almost a full year, we had the Fed funds rates at 0%. And while we have the mortgage rates very, very low at that time, they weren't 0%. So it's very important that we, as an industry, we understand that while this is good news, that doesn't mean that the mortgage rates overnight went down half a percentage. Okay, take it back, Scott. All right, appreciate you stealing my thunder there. So, um, so anyway, but what was more important, what's always more important, not what the Fed does, but what the Fed says, okay? What the Fed said was that, yes, they're cutting rates half, from, half a percentage point, but... They anticipated another half a percentage point cut um, before the end of the year and a full percentage point cut throughout 2025. So we're looking at a total of a 2% cut in those rates, which means that, and the reason why they're doing that and what that means is that the economy is not looking that good. And folks, from a mortgage and real estate standpoint, we don't want the economy to, to be doing well. Okay, it's, it's, it's counterintuitive, but we want the economy to suck a little bit. We want this to lead to a recession because that's good for mortgages. Now, what does this mean to real estate agents right now? What it means is this, okay? First off, there is the real impact, okay? Which we're gonna go over today. How much more home can a person now buy? And that's a very real impact, but more importantly than the real impact is the psychological impact, okay? I've spoken to several clients that have gone on the contract and they said, hey, now that rates are lower, I feel like it's a good time to buy a house, so I did. And I said, how much lower are they? And all three of them said, I don't know which means that they're just reading headlines, which are finally saying things like rates are coming down, now is a good time to buy, et cetera. The Today Show did two pieces in the last two weeks saying that now is a good time to buy a house. So the psychological impact of seeing headlines about dropping rates and dropping rates and good time to buy is going to massively increase uh, the demand and lead into what's gonna happen to this housing market in the coming months and years. Okay, and this is why for us, look, Yes, it's a fancy headline that we're saying, oh, go 20 deals in the next by the end of the year. But the truth is, we can do this because because of the Fed. One thing is the ability for people to buy a house increase. That means that there's a lot more people that can now purchase that couldn't purchase before. And then number two, we're finally getting some optimism when it comes to the housing market, when it comes to people's belief that now it's a good time to buy. So this is a very interesting step. Every time that the mortgage rates drop at least 1%, that means that there's 5 million people that can enter the market that couldn't enter the market before. Think about this. And one thing that's crazy about this, <laughs> one thing that's crazy about that, uh, about that, that stat is that in 2023, we only sold 4 million homes all over America. That means that one percentage dropping the rates bring more people than the whole 2023 sales into this market. 
And the reason why this happened is for the chart that you can see next to that, which is the average buying power goes up drastically with just a drop in rates. And right now, the biggest thing that we've been fighting is affordability. And just by the rates going from 8%, which we had 8% for a while, all the way down to now at the 6%, we can even make, we have a couple people locked at five and a quarter percent with some strategies that we're gonna show you. A lot of those people now can buy houses. The other thing that this does is don't only think about people that couldn't qualify before, but also people that, that didn't want to leave their 4% rate, their 4.5% rate. It's a lot easier for them to part ways to a 4 or a 4.5% rate and switch that to a 5.5 or 5.875 than it is with an 8%. So this is what we're having in this quarter that we haven't had the rest of the year. We finally have some optimism around houses and we finally have a pool of people that have been sitting in the, in the sidelines waiting for something like this to happen. And to what Scott was saying, because now this is all over the news and because people think that the rates went down overnight, which by the way, it wasn't overnight that they were down. They've been going down for the past two weeks. Now is the time to take care of that database, to jump in and to turn those people into contracts. I'll tell you, Scott and I have been getting more contracts this month than we get in, the, in a long, long time. And it's because so much buzz around the rates allow people to finally allow themselves to buy the house. Well, actually, before we um, switch the camera, before we, we move off this slide, guys, I want to let you know and show you that what we're saying is not conjecture because on the slide on the left shows you um, during periods of recession, how much the rates drops and more importantly in the blue, how many additional people qualified. So when rates dropped from 16 to 11.75, 21 additional people qualified. 18 to 13, 20 million. Most recently from 3.75 to 2.75, 5 million. So when we're saying that 5 million more people I'll uh, qualify, this is historically accurate. Okay, next, how do we get to offer tomorrow's rate today? Look, uh, let me break this down. I think this is such an important soundbite for everybody listening to this, to have this conversation with their clients. We are in the sweet spot right now. And why I'm saying that is this. There is a strategy we're about to share with you where you could offer tomorrow's rates today. So that advantage, Plus, we have the advantage that right now you're going to get more negotiation out of sellers than you are when those 5 million buyers hit the market and the market gets screaming hot again. So check out this. Check out this home, okay? I had a client that was looking to buy this property. So real estate was listed at 359, okay? He was putting down 20%, rate seven and a quarter. As you can see on the left, his mortgage payment all in was $2,209. And he said, man, I really don't want that payment. I'm going to offer $20,000 less. And as you can see, you do the math, it only saves them $109 a month. And look, let's just be honest. There's never been a time that there's a, a, a family sitting down going over their finances and they're like, oh, oh, if only we had an extra $109, we'd be comfortable, right? Like, that's not a thing. So I said, look, don't do that. That's wrong. Instead, offer the $359, but ask the seller to contribute 3 or 4 or even 5%. Now, that's less than 20 grand. Okay, we could use that money to buy down your interest rate. We were able to drop that person's rate from 7.25 to 5.25. Now we're saving them uh, 370 some odd dollars a month. Now this is meaningful. This is a car payment. This is a utility payment or two. This is a car insurance payment. This is meaningful. In fact, what I then showed all the way to the right is how much we'd have to drop that price to have the same savings. And guys, we'd have to drop that price from 359000 to 290. So, it, so let's think about this, right? Number one, what the Fed just did, what's been going on in the markets right now, is increasing how much somebody qualifies for. We could use this strategy to increase it even more to use the strategy and get people tomorrow's rates today. And this is the conversation that you need to have. Bring us in on the conversation so we could do the math. And we're going to uh, be able to get people off the fence. Again, I spoke to three people yesterday that have been waiting for over a year. And that is the power of the strategy. Look, this is the thing. At the end of the day, the Fed said that they're going to continue to drop rates, which means that you may have a lot of clients that are going to say, OK, this is the start of rates coming down. It's a good time for me to maybe start the process, but maybe not pull the trigger. What we're saying and what Scott said, you know, appropriately is we believe that now is the best time because we are in that sweet spot where 
sellers are still not getting that rush of people showing their like looking for their houses that rush of people offering on their houses but there is you know some relief in mortgages and there's some more people that can qualify so right at this time is when we can maximize both things we can maximize the ability that now people can qualify but also maximize all the other things that we can still do in this market like ask for seller concessions like get you paid from the seller and not from the buyer and all these different things because if the target rate for mortgages is five and a half five and a quarter four point eight seven five rather than waiting to get there once the houses are more expensive and they're not going to get all these you know concessions and things like that you can actually negotiate those rates today so that's that as an example right now we have a buyer uh right now we have we're working with um a, a, a builder that's offering this if you use us as the as the lender so this is an example of two things He's selling the house for $364,000. He's offering a 3% um, commission to you, the buyer's agent. And if they use financing through us, they're also offering some incentive for us to lower that rate or help them with closing costs. So for example, with something like this, and I put this example together, very, very, you know, first time home buyer, minimum down payment, somebody that doesn't have necessarily the best credit ever, we can give them a 5.75% rate using this strategy and get into a brand new house for $364,000 and only pay $2,600 with everything, with principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Or if somebody doesn't have the money to put any money down, we can do a down payment assistance program and use the closing costs to actually pay for closing costs. They come into the table with zero out of pocket and the payment goes up to $28.69. Guys, these are opportunities that once there's a rush, we're not going to be able to give to the clients. This is new construction in Lehigh. There's 15 houses available right now. And if all goes well, we're going to continue to show 15 houses and 15 houses every quarter with an offer similar to this. And how far out are these houses for being done? Oh, they're going to be uh, they're going to be done in November. So these are the type of things that we need to start going with our clients. And look, these strategies, the 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 application of these strategies for you to be proactive. You have to be proactive and call your clients and tell them that these opportunities are here and that these opportunities are not going to be here for a very long time. All right. Now, I know that every agent on this call has had a has had an opportunity to sit down with the seller who wanted to sell their property. But the problem was. They're sit the seller is currently sitting on a mortgage with a 3% rate. And they're married to it, right? They don't want to leave that 3%. They're going from 3% to 7% or 8% sucks. I don't want to do it. And this is why, okay? Let's say today's rate is 6.75, okay? They bought a house six years ago for 500 grand. They put down 20%. This is a standard second home or somebody retiring down here kind of scenario, okay? Using realistic appreciation rates that's happened, okay? Uh, the house should be sitting at about $695,000 and their mortgage balance has been paid down over those six years to 343, okay? So they go, okay, if they, we sell a house, we got 35 grand in costs, we're gonna walk away with 317. I wanna buy a new house, okay? That's gonna have 12 grand in closing costs. So now I have 305 available for the down payment. Well, I'm looking at a house for 850. I put down the 305, I borrow 545. Here's the problem. At today's interest rate, their payment is gonna go up by $2,572 a month. So what can you possibly say to a seller to get them to be comfortable jacking up their payment by $2,600 a month? And the answer is only one thing, and that's what I'm about to share with you. And this is the thing. If agents go into these appointments without a lender by their side to help them, they're missing out on closing opportunities because these are conversations that are very easy for us to have. Put us to work. <laughs> Very easy for us to have, and we have them all the time with people, but difficult for agents because they don't do it all the time and they're uncomfortable. So here's the strategy, okay? Americans are walking around with a mountain of debt, okay? So in this scenario, we rounded off the numbers, but this is a real scenario, okay? Person was walking around with about um, $60,000 in credit card debt and a $40,000 car loan, and the payments on those debts came out to just under three grand a month, 29.35 a month, okay? 
And the total, again, we round it was $100,000. So the strategy is to do a debt consolidation, move up buyer. Check it out. Instead of putting the whole 305 down, we take 100 grand and wipe out the debt. We put down the remaining 205. Now their monthly outlay only moves by $286 a month. So to walk up to a seller and go, look, if you just sell and buy, your payment's going up $2,600 a month. But let me get my lender on, on a Zoom call real quick. Let me show you how we could upgrade you to that $850,000 house that you want and only move your payments a couple of hundred dollars a month. Folks, these are the types of strategies and the types of creative solutions that are going to help you close 20 more deals by the end of the year. This is going, and I want you to think back to all the listing appointments that you didn't get. Go back and call through those people and have that conversation. Call your buyers that didn't buy, that didn't qualify for enough, that were afraid of interest rates, whatever the heck the reason was, and let and give them all a call and go, hey, your buying power has increased massively based on what happened yesterday. Let me reconnect you with, your, with the lender so we can see how much that is to determine if now is the right time or not. Guys, these are the conversations that are going to make all the difference in the world because here's the thing. While sellers are sitting on their 3% mortgage rate that they're married to, the reality is the average person has a blended household interest rate that's much higher. Okay, Here's another scenario that we uh, prepared for a client. It was actually, um, it just went up even higher. The, the average uh, credit card interest rate I saw this morning is like 27%. 26 and a half yeah. now that the rates were cut. So true, true. <laughs> nailed it. Um, but this client had these balances with those interest rates. And when we did a blended rate calculator, what we explained to him was that his blended household rate was 6.331. So to be able to refinance him down to a five and a quarter or a six actually is improving his interest rate situation but they don't know to think about it like this. They just think about their mortgage rate and that is the mess. Okay, by the way, Blended, you're gonna have uh, access to these slides like we always do. In addition to that, we're also gonna share with you the Blended Rate Calculator. It's easy. You just kind of like plug in the, ad, the, the debts that they have, plug in the interest rates, and then you have a rate. You can show them what they're actually paying versus what they would pay or, if they were to do it. Or plug in your own rate and your own debts. Yeah. And see if now is the right time for you to buy because I know a bunch of agents that are also waiting. There you go. That would be interesting. Okay. The other thing that we're big on is to show people the cost of waiting. Why? Because look, the decision to buy a house now versus later has to do with the fact that, you know, it's going to be more expensive if I wait. And part of it, it's talking about taxes. And if you've been to some of our classes, you know that we're big proponents of really understanding how you can save money to people, not just for the 30 days while you're during that transaction, but the, for the 30 years after. And one of the best ways it, is by understanding the simple things in taxes where you can just by moving out of the property at the right time or selling the property at the right time can save you thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in taxes. This is an example of a client that we like to use a lot. Look, we have a client that originally purchased a house um, for $500,000. Now, the value of the property when they converted that house into a rental property, which a lot of our clients do, by the way, you should be calling your clients every single year and encourage them to look at real estate as a real uh, wealth building asset, turning into rental, sell it, use 1031 exchanges, all of these things. So this particular client bought a house for $500,000, they converted it when the house was worth $703,000 and then they sold the house five years later. Now, I hope you guys are all thinking the same thing. They turned the property into a rental property and then after they turned the property into a rental property, they waited five years to sell that property. What kind of taxes are you going to hit there, right? If you do that, you're going to have to pay what's called capital gain taxes. If the original purchase price was $500,000 and they sold the house for two, for $899,000, the capital gains is $399,000 in a property like this, which means that an 18.8% an capital gains, their, um, their, their tax liability is going to be $75,000. Now, 
we are making some assumptions here when we talk to the clients and that's okay. If you're going to be an advisor, you need to make these assumptions. The majority of people are going to fall into a category of paying 18.8% when it comes to capital gain taxes. Some people are probably going to end up paying a lot more, but for the most part, if somebody can qualify to buy a house and actually got a capital gains, then they're probably going to pay this rate, not less than this. So 18.8%, it's a good number for you to pick. Now, we all know, hopefully, that there's a way to avoid capital gains, right? If you live in a property and it's your primary residence and you live in a property two out of the last five years, now it doesn't have to be the last two years, but two out of the last five years, meaning I lived in this house and then I turn it into a rental and then I turn it into a rental for three years. That means that I lived there two out of the last five years, we don't pay capital gain taxes on up to $500,000 if you're married or $250,000 if you're single. How does that work? How does that work in an example like this? It's simple. In this case, oh, by the way, the client only made $324,000. In this case, if you talk to a client, same client, $500,000, their property when they converted to rental was $703,000 and they want to sell it after three years, not five years, the house, granted, is going to be worth a little less because it's two less years of appreciation. But because they go into that, into that two out of the last five years and they don't have to pay up to $500,000 in capital gains, their tax liability is actually zero. And what they end up making is $313,000 selling the property two years earlier than if they wait. This is the thing. If that same person is selling a house and they're trying to reinvest that money and to buy something else, well, the cost of waiting those two years in Collier County, at least, it's going to be for a house that, you know, in this case for them would be a move up house. It would be $64,000. So if you think about it, they're not making an extra $10,000 on the sale but they're also not spending an extra $64,000 when they purchase their next home. That's a net gain of $50,000. Guys, we need to talk to clients. We need to teach clients taxes and how they can maximize their dollars by transacting today. And that's the problem. We haven't talked to our clients about this. We only talk to clients about, you know, just the easiest stuff and the properties and all that but show them the money. And I promise you, the numbers show us that now is the right time to transact rather than waiting. All right, look, <clears throat> we're now in a, in a post-settlement world where, um, where we need to be conveying our value. Can you imagine if you converted your house to a rental two and a half years ago? You don't know anything about what we're talking about. And your real estate agent calls you and says, hey, I gotta come by and talk to you. All right, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my computer. I want to have my lender there. There's, there's some. I, I think I could save you a boatload of money. And you sit them down and you go, look, I think we need to get this house on the market and move quick because if we wait six more months, you're going to increase your tax liability by seventy five thousand dollars. And let me explain to you how that works, folks. You talk about conveying value. Nobody is going to be more loyal to you than if you could save them $75,000 in taxes and show them mathematically what the things are. Look, buyers are, are making decisions on whether or not, buyers and sellers are making decisions on whether or not to buy or sell based on feelings. We need to give them facts. We need to give them figures. We need to give them math. And that is where we as your partner can help you do this, but this is critically important. Okay, now let's talk about assumable loans, okay? Um, all FHA and VA loans are assumable. And uh, although I'm getting some of these deals, there's a lot more out there that can be done. So let's say you walk into a listing appointment, the seller has a, an FHA or VA mortgage at 3%. They bought it six years ago for 500. They put down 20%. Uh, the house is worth 695. We know these numbers. Okay. What most people think is if the house is 695 and I'm assuming a mortgage at 343, I got to bring 350 grand to the table. Well, that sucks. I don't have 350 grand. Guess I can't buy this house. And that is a miss because there is a product where we could do a home equity line of credit for purchase. Now, everybody thinks of home equity line of credit. They're called HELOCs. Everybody thinks HELOCs are something that are good to get after you buy a home. And for the record, they are. But what most people don't know is that we can offer a HELOC as a purchase 
up to 90% financing. So now, instead of them bringing 350 grand for a down payment, they only need to bring 69.5, let's call that $70,000. This is saving them $280,000 out of pocket at closing. This is absolutely huge. Again, how many sellers um, are being presented with this information on a listing appointment? And I would argue a tiny percentage. You want to stand out on listing appointments to help you get to those 20 more deals by the end of the year? This is the type of conversations you need to be having with your sellers. And by the way, if you're dealing in this situation, if, if you go back to the prior situation with the tax liability, you think the seller is going to be super nitpicky on getting an extra ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars uh, for the list price of their home when they could lose seventy-five thousand dollars if it sits on the market too long? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. So not only are you going to pick up a listing, you're going to pick up a listing with a very motivated seller that has a very definitive timeline and a lot of money at stake. That is the ideal listing to have in any market, particularly this one. Now, a lot of times it's hard to start those conversations. And one of the easiest ways to start conversations with people that are already on a home is by offering them something, not just your services, right? Not by selling them something, but offering them something. And this is why we really think that the database is super important and focusing on growing your database, it's what's going to make you a lot of money. And I, I got a question for you guys. Folks, in the chat room, um, out of control this rating it, rating itself from one to ten ten being perfect and managing a database one being sucking um put in the chat what your numbers are how you would rate yourself go ahead okay database is super important and look because once you have a database and you engage with that database it's very easy to do that type of consultative conversation of hey look you sold this house you bought this house at this time did you know that now you don't have to pay taxes on this like those conversations are easy once they're into your database but the idea here is to grow that database. I think that right now we have a huge opportunity, which is because of the lawsuit, there's a lot of realtors that have left the industry. A lot of them have left the industry over the past couple of months and a lot more will leave the industry in the next couple of months. That means that all the transactions that they did, all of those people that they work with, well, those databases are going to be lost. So. We have this tool that allows you to adopt clients, to really take those clients that you couldn't do deals with for whatever reason, and now put them into your database. And the easiest way to do it is by giving them some value. This is, this is a tool that's called HomeBot. We provide it to you for free. If you absolutely hate us and you don't want to work with us, you can go ahead and pay yourself, although I think that's a mistake. But look, and we'll, we'll send you the link to sign up to this. But with this tool, every single person that signs up with you, they're going to get a report on their house that's going to tell them how much your house is worth, how much they can rent it on an Airbnb on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, and what happens if they reinvest that money into their house, how much faster they're going to end up paying off that loan. It also tells them how much they pay towards interest, towards principal, and what happens if they make extra payments towards that. And it gives them a pulse on the market. And it also allows them to start exploring areas, not specific houses, but start exploring the temperature on the market. Should they buy? Should they sell? And most importantly, where it says how much the, the house is worth, there's a little button that says tune value. And if they click on that button, that sends you an alert for you to do a proper CMA on the house. And the way that we explain it to our clients is simple is look, it's super important for you to see where your asset is. We look at things like our bank statement every single month, but there's nothing when it comes to your house. This is going to tell you where the market is, what your house is worth and all that. But anytime that you want a real professional to look at how much your house is worth for you to be able to do a transaction, rather than going to Zillow or calling your cousin who's never sold a house in his life but has a real estate license, you click on that button and we're going to have a real professional do a CMA for you. And obviously, if this is your account, then that alert is going to go to you. This is extremely important now because there's a lot of people that the realtor left the industry and are just left out to dry. And giving them something like this will allow you to interact with them. And look, as rates go down, as the news of rates going down happen, and as we have right now, that 
sweet spot where sellers are willing to give up some concessions and rates are going down, now is the time to attack your database and to attack not just your database, but everybody else's database. Now, look, the one thing that everybody should know is uh, if you guys are working with Ed and I, we are very tactical in what we do, okay? So on the back end of this amazing tool, uh, from a consumer standpoint, is a database goldmine from a business professional standpoint because every single thing they click on, we know about. And how do I know that consumers love this? Look at those open rates on the right. Um, and of 436 people that are in there, um, at the time we snapped this, it was an 84% open rate. And more importantly, within the system, you could convert yourself to a buyer. So out of the 436 clients that we had at that, at that time, 51 of a 10% had turned themselves into buyer. The buyer report, it's a separate report that they get, has an open rate of 72%. And then on the left, you can see, as clients are clicking on things, we're getting real-time alerts, all right? If you look at the top one, okay? They viewed the listing detail, they viewed the home's market, they viewed a home search, and they viewed the listing details. This is somebody who's considering, or at least poking around, thinking about selling their home. You go down three of them. They viewed a home search. They, they uh, viewed markets. They made a buyer's report and they started looking at listing details. This is somebody that's poking around about buying, not only buying, buying specific homes because they're clicking on listings. These are the types of things that we need to be providing to people where we're providing great value from their standpoint and we're collecting great data from our standpoint. This is the way to manage your database at the highest possible level. Um, and it's an absolute no-brainer. Nothing has ever in my 27 years made me more money than this. This is absolutely fantastic. So you can adopt people, okay? And then when the time is right, you can close them. Think about this. If you walk into a room and there's 100 people, maybe one or two or eight of them are thinking about buying apps. And what happens is the entire real estate community converges on those couple of people. Everybody I talk to that's an agent converges on them. What this tool does is it allows you to speak to the other 92 people in the room because this is, again, a report. Whether you own or you don't, there is a report that we can plug you into this system. And when we talk about adopting databases, adopting future clients, this is the way it works. We have in total thousands and thousands and thousands of people in this, uh, in this system, and it spits out deals on a regular basis, opportunities for us to kick referrals back to the original agents that sent them to us which is super, super exciting. Now, for those of you that haven't seen our class on how to thrive in a post-settlement era, um, we went over a lot of information in the class, but what Ed and I did was we created a buyer's presentation for agents to use. Look, I'm hearing a lot of different strategies of the way people are dealing with this new reality. Some very good, some terrible. And uh, the difference between good and bad is a buyer's presentation. Yes, you can have some cute scripts that'll get people to sign and that's fine. But the way to really maximize your conversion, and that's that's the focal point, okay? Maximize your conversion and maximize your, your commission is by putting together a good buyer's presentation. And we put things in the sequence very intentionally, okay? And with each of these steps, there is an influence objective, okay? So we want to remove fear of the market. The presentation takes you through slides and does that. We want to create fear of missing out. We touched a little bit on that today. Uh, total clarity of, pro pro of the process, removing stress points, a roadmap. Then we get into needs versus wants, and then you put the buyer's representation agreement in front of them after you have showed them things like that buy-down strategy, things like that assumable loan strategy, um, things like statistical data, this is all super, super critical. So we put a mountain of work into this. We consulted with a lot of people. We took some stuff from ours, took some stuff from others and put this together. And we want to make this available to you. So um, do me a favor, go ahead, take out your phones, scan the QR code. I know there's a couple questions that um, that I'll have Ed moderate uh, here in a second, but um, take out your phone and scan this QR code. Here's what it's going to do. It's going to schedule a quick 30 minutes Zoom with either Ed or I. And we're gonna talk a little bit about your business because here's the deal. We made that slide for everybody. Maybe you work in the luxury market. Maybe you work in the investor market. Maybe you work in the first home home buyer market. The meat of the slides is still there, the bones of the slide, but we might have to change some numbers and change some things around. So 
We can go through that deck with you, personalize it for you, and then provide it to you during that meeting. So all you have to do is drop your photo, your name, and your branding on there, and you are good to go. Um, it also gives us the ability, maybe there was a topic we touched on, maybe we touched on a little too quickly, or maybe you just want more detailed information. Maybe you have clients that specifically you think would benefit from knowing that and you want to know more about that. Same thing, click the QR code, schedule the Zoom meeting, and uh, we'd love to help you with that. So, um, and I see we got some questions um, there. Yeah, thank you, Garrett. I okay. sent them the link. I sent you guys the link for you to sign up to HomeBot, and everybody's going to get a link of this presentation. Guys, we have that opportunity in Lehigh. If you guys are interested in being a part of that, uh, send send us something in the chat or DM us or email us or something, and you'll get uh, the video, the, the slides, and the video of the past presentations we've done as well. All right. Um Yep, that's all we have, man. Guys, thank you so much. Short uh, and sweet, baby. For everybody that jumped on, we're going to keep bringing this type of value to you guys. So please keep your eyes open on your calendars and your emails for more invites to future webinars. Um, I I'm telling you right now, if we play this right, we could build up an awful lot of momentum so we could just blast off when season hits next year because I think next year is going to be a lot of fun again. And let's be honest, it hasn't been fun for the last couple of years. So uh, Scott and Gregorio, I got a Valentine Neo Home Loans. Team Financial Quest. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on those Zoom meetings. Take care.